Hey everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. This is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine Plant-Based Fitness Nutrition. This is going to be an interesting topic. One that, uh, you know, I, I did some digging and found <laughs> out that uh, some of the ideas that were being proposed about odd chain fatty acids were not exactly <laughs> what they were living up to. All right, before we get started, this video is for informational and educational purposes only. It's not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Today, we're going to be talking about odd chain fatty acids. What are odd chain fatty acids? What do they do? And where do they come from? How do we get them into our diet? So there's a lot, a lot there's been an explosion of interest in odd chain fatty acids. Now, first, let's just talk about what is an odd chain fatty acid. Okay, so we've got a lot of different fatty acids. We've got short chain fatty acids. These are things that uh, are formed when our microbiome uh, chews up fiber and creates short chain fatty acids. Propionate, acetate, and butyrate. Three amazing short chain fatty acids that have a myriad different purposes and effects in our bodies. Now, these fatty acids can be changed into longer chain fatty acids. Long chain fatty acids are called PUFAs or polyunsaturated fatty acids. Long chain PUFAs are called omega-3s, omega-6, EPA, and DHA. Okay, sorry for all the chemical <laughs> and scientific stuff, but you kind of need to know the basics so that you understand what an odd chain fatty acid is. So most of the uh, longer chain fatty acids are all even numbers, so C22, C24, C26. So the C stands for carbon. So these are carbon chains, chains of carbon, right? Carbon atoms all lined up in really long forms to form fatty acids. Um, and our body can use enzymes like elongase or desaturase to change how many carbon atoms and change what those things do. That's how we actually convert ALA down to SDA, then ETA, EPA, DPA, and DHA. So we change all those. Same we do with omega-6. We change that from uh, LA or linolenic acid down into uh, GLA to DGLA or DGLA to GLA and then into arachidonic acid and to other forms. So we use these enzymes, the same enzymes to convert ALA and, and LA, the two essential fats. So there are only two, two essential fats that we know of. One is called alpha linoleic, linolenic acid, which is the omega-3 fatty acid that all human beings require because we cannot get them from food. I cannot make them in our bodies. All the rest of the forms besides LA and ALA, omega-6 and omega-3, all the rest of the forms our body can make through our own enzymatic processes. Okay, so a company came out with a big claim claiming that this is the first new essential fatty acid discovered since ALA 90 years ago. All right. So let's define what an essential fatty acid is. Um, so a, an essential fatty acid, and, and I'll read the quote directly uh, from its medical definition. Um, so only two fatty acids are known to be essential for humans, ALA or alpha linolenic acid, which is the omega-3, and LA, or linoleic acid, which is the omega-6. Essential fatty acids, or EFAs, are fatty acids that humans and other animals must ingest because the body requires them for good health and because the body cannot synthesize it themselves. All right, so that goes the same why we call essential amino acids, right? Our body can take the nine essential amino acids. We have to get those from food, just like every other animal on this planet. All animals have essential amino acids. Now they differ. Herbivores have nine essential amino acids and carnivores have 10. They require taurine. We don't. We can make our own taurine, just like every other herbivore. So there's a difference there. But 
the basic essential amino acids, our body can take those and form all 20 of the rest of the uh, of the rest of the 20 amino acids that our body needs. We actually form a lot more amino acids than that, but those are the base amino acids. Okay, so we've got essential fats, but there's only two. But now there's this, this comment that, hey, wait a minute, there's another essential fat that our body can't make, so we have to get it from our diet. Now, the bigger thing that, that's just like, okay, so that's interesting. Is it really an essential fat? Let's take a look at the research. So diving into the research and the claims, the claims were, oh my God, this is three times better than omega-3s. Well, if that's true, well, this is really an exciting uh, uh, find, right? It's essential. It's the first essential in 90 years. Wow, that would be big. It's better than omega-3. Wow, that would be huge. And let's take a look at what it says. It says in the research data, the study uh, titled Efficacy of Dietary Odd Chain Fatty Acids and Associated with Health Benefits in Humans, Could It Be Essential? So this is really what sparked the interest. It came out in 2022, I believe, that uh, sparked the interest in people. Hey, what is this thing about uh, odd chain fatty acids? The reason it's called odd chains because it's an odd number. Most of them are even numbers. Odd chains, like C15, is an odd number. It's 15 carbon uh, atoms strewn together, or C17, one of the other major odd chain fatty acids. So it looked at C15 and C17, the two major odd chain fatty acids, and they found that they were associated with lower cardiometabolic diseases, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure. All right, that sounds cool. Higher dietary intake of, of, of OCFAs, is also associated with lower mortality. Wow, it's extending life. This is really cool. So how do we get these odd chain fatty acids? And then they say, well, the major source of where humans get odd chain fatty acids is butter. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you're losing me now. Because <laughs> human beings have been around a lot long before butter was... <laughs> ever created. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, okay, something's wrong with this one here. And then I hear, oh, it's also in lots of dairy fat. And I'm like, okay, again, human beings never even ate dairy for the first couple hundred thousand years of our existence. So this can't be right either. Well, they found short chain fatty, these uh, odd chain fatty acids all over in our body, protecting cells, they were pretty ubiquitous throughout. We're like, well, where are we getting this from? Not everybody eats butter. I know I don't. I haven't eaten butter or high fat dairy in 38 years. Where am I getting my odd chain fatty acids? Well, you know, sometimes it just makes sense if you follow the through thread. What is butter? What is dairy, high fat dairy? It's made by a cow. What is a cow eating all day long to create its odd chain fatty acids? Grass. There's a big ass clue for you. <laughs> so when you follow the research, and I'll, I'll put it up on the screen, um, that it shows that here it is, and I'll put this one up too. This is a 22 uh, study, 2022 study. Let me put it into the comment section. You guys can see it for yourself. So this is the study right here. Broader and safety clinical relevant activities of this odd chain pentodecanoic acid compared to omega-3. So they're comparing it to omega-3 and they found it's actually better at Antioxidant properties better at uh, therapeutics for mood disorders, microbial infections, even cancer. I'm like, wow, better than that. That's pretty important. We better have a good way of, of producing these. But if they're what they're saying is it's truly an uh, essential fat, well, then wait a minute. We have to get it through our diet. And do we have to get it through, you know, our, our, butter or dairy products. So let's put up the quote where this comes from, where this idea comes from. And it's from this study. 
I'm going to put it up on the screen for you here. And here's the quote from the study. A growing body of evidence supports that this C15 odd chain fatty acid found in butter is essential fatty acid that is necessary to diet and to support long-term metabolic and heart health. Okay, essential meaning that we have to get it from our food. But is that true? Okay, so this is where research can make assumptions and assume that. But remember, what is the research looking at? The research is looking at human beings who, by and large, are not vegan. Okay, so they're not eating a high fiber, high plant based diet. They're generally eating a low fiber. Remember, the average American is consuming 10 to 15 grams of fiber per day. All right where our ancient ancestors were consuming 100 to 250 grams of fiber per day. And we know that both from the enzymes in the mouth that were clinging to the teeth on fossilized bone, we also know that from fossilized poop of humans that they were eating a ton of fiber and we're eating a micro amount <laughs> comparably. They were eating 10 to 20 times as much fiber in plant foods. Now. That's an important piece because what I'm going to show you is really explosive. <laughs> okay, so let's get into this next study. Okay, I'll put this study up on the screen. It's a review. A review means it's looking at all the research, right? Like a meta-analysis, a review of odd chain fatty acid metabolism, the role of C15 and C17, the two key uh, um, odd chain fatty acids in health and disease. Okay, so they said the role of C15 in you is reinforced by a, by a number of important biological and nutritional ob observations. So it's really clear that these are important for us. They're important for our over overall health. Um, uh, historically, odd chain saturated fatty acids were, um, were, were gotten from basically high fat dairy, um, cheese, butter, uh, ice cream, milk products, full fat milk products. Okay, so they go on to discuss a further number of studies have shown cardiometabolic diseases and have shown plasma concentrations of uh, short chain fatty acids, specifically C15, with lower disease risk, although the mechanism is debated. Now, this is important. They go on to say one possible mechanism for the endogenous production of OCFs, the C15, endogenous. That's made in our body. Now, they're saying that this is endogenously made in our body. That means our body is making its own odd chain fatty acids. Therefore, it cannot be an essential fatty acid. Okay, so this is important. And it, it actually explains the mechanism of how it does this. So one possible mechanism is that alpha oxidation involving the activation then hydroxylation of the alpha carbon followed by the removal of a terminal carboxyl group okay what does that mean it means that our body is using enzymes and different methods of oxidation to lengthen or shorten it and create these uh 15 carbon chain uh fatty acids the odd chain fatty acids all right, just an elaborate way of actually explaining the exact mechanism of how our body creates these inside our body. Second, further evidence shows an endogenous pathway in human plasma, that's our bloodstream, where the ratio of C15 to C17 is approximately one to two. So C15, one unit to two units of C17. That ratio is important because the amount that's in food is inverse. It's two, whoops, two <laughs> to one. So it's the inverse in our bloodstream naturally occurring than what occurs in the food, the 
high dairy fat. So why is it so different? So it's two to one in dietary fat and one to two in our bloodstream. Okay, so it's clear that it's being made inside our body because it's being made in a different ratio than what's found in the food. That food ratio can't be inverse or the opposite if it's coming from our food. Okay, so let's look at the next study. Thank you guys for hanging with me. I'll summarize it at the end in very simplistic terms, but I do want to explain the true science behind this. Here's the 2017 study. So actually this was even before this, but sometimes these studies come out and the people posting another study aren't reading this particular study. So they're missing out. So odd chain fatty acids as a biomarker for dietary fiber intake and novel pathway for endogenous production from propionate. Okay, let me explain that title. So odd chain fatty acids, that's a C15, is a biomarker for how much fiber we are eating. In other words, the more fiber we eat, the more odd chain fatty acid production we see. And it's, as you can see in the second half, a novel pathway for endogenous production from propionate. So our body is intaking fiber, our microbiome is converting it to a short chain fatty acid called propionate, and then our body is taking that propionate, pulling it into the bloodstream and changing it through enzymatic pathways into C15. So the more fiber we eat with the help of a healthy microbiome, we are creating more odd chain fatty acids. So this is really important. And here's the summary from that study. So it's not the dairy fat that was the source of it. It was the cow eating the grass and it's digestive fermentation of the herbivore animal of having their gut bacteria transform or biodegrade or metabolize that fiber into short chain fatty acids, specifically propionate. That's why there's such a high amount of odd chain fatty acids in dairy milk. It's the cow making it just like we do by consuming fiber, letting our gut ferment it. Here's what the conclusion of the study. The conclusion, our data show that gut-derived propionate is used for the hepatic, that's liver, for the hepatic synthesis, that's the creation. So our liver is creating it from propionate into odd chain fatty acids in humans. In humans, that's important. This is not animal data, this is human data. The association of odd chain fatty acids with a decreased risk of type two diabetes may therefore also relate to dietary fiber intake and not only dairy fat. So stop believing the hype that you need to consume dairy fat. The dairy fat came from the dairy cow who ate the dairy's grass. <laughs> and that grass and fermentation is how that cow created it, just like we do when we eat high fiber plant foods. Our microbiome breaks it down into short chain fatty acids like propionate and then creates the odd chain fatty acids. So quite clearly, the reason we have seen a very low amount of odd chain fatty acids in humans is because we're eating a very low amount of fiber <laughs> and we're not producing our own. So, you know, the assumption once again is, oh, we're doing studies on people who aren't eating enough of the good foods and therefore their body is not producing enough of the good fatty acids. Oh, because they're not there, it must mean we need to get them from dairy fat. No, no. Get it from where the cow who makes it gets it from, the fiber. Oh my God. Sometimes I get so frustrated with these 
assumptions by scientific people who are writing these studies, who are doing these studies and aren't seeing what I'm seeing and, 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 and studies that are already published in 2017, five years ago, six years ago. Come on, we knew this was not an essential fatty acid. And it's not the only place you can get it from dairy. We make our own. This is over and over and over again. We're seeing the research. You don't need to get essential EPA. Uh, uh, they're not even, EPA and DHA are not even essential. You don't need to get omega-3s from fish. Fish have already converted it down to EPA and DHA. We don't need it that way. We need ALA. Just like this odd chain, C15 and C17 are very important for overall health. And they increase the more you eat fiber. The fiber hits our microbiome. Our microbiome increases the propionate. That increased amount of propionate, our body turns into odd chain fatty acid 15 and 17, and it improves our health. Reduces the risk for cardiovascular disease, reduces the risk for cancer, ups the anti-aging ability, cell protection, better uh, metabolic health on the cellular level, better production of energy, more protection. So yes, odd chain fatty acids are a great thing and our body will make it if we give it the right food, fiber containing foods. Remember there's zero fiber in any animal product whatsoever, none. It does not exist in anything, eggs, dairy, fish, meat, lamb, chicken, does not matter, zero fiber. Fiber only comes from plants. It is necessary for our microbiome to make short chain fatty acids, which then it can convert into many other things. Butyrate, you've heard me speak on the importance of butyrate, um, but there it is. It is not important to get it from dairy. So don't believe the hype, don't need to take a supplement, just eat your fiber, you'll have plenty of odd chain fatty acids, C15 and C17, and it'll help you with it. The more fiber you eat, the more you're gonna produce these short chain fatty acids, the more your body can make its own odd chain fatty acids. Important for overall health. And I think more and more research is gonna come out. And I hope they get off this bandwagon that it has to come from dairy. It does not. It dairy, <laughs> the dairy cow makes it from eating grass and fermenting it just like our gut does. So, you know, just follow the through, th the through thread. <laughs> you know, it's so simple when you see essential amino acids don't come from animals. Odd chain fatty acids are, are made by animals, but including us, we make them too. You know, essential amino acids and essential fats aren't made by animals. They're made by plants and plants alone. This is so important that we don't need to consume and we shouldn't be consuming any animal product. There is zero nutritional requirement for anything that comes exclusively from an animal, none, including <laughs> odd chain fatty acids, C15 and C17. You do not need to take a supplement. You do not need to uh, um, eat animal dairy products. What you do need to do is eat your plants, high and whole food plants with fiber, and you will get all of the odd chain fatty acids you need as long as you have a healthy microbiome. Now, if you are taking or need to take uh, because of an infection, um, antibiotics, remember this is going to wipe out a lot of your good bacteria, including those ones that will produce these odd chain fatty acids via the production of short chain fatty acids. So remember, if you are a high plant eating person and you have to, or you are in a situation where you feel you need to take antibiotics, please remember to help work on yourself to restore your, your probiotics to their healthy normal levels um, by eating um, foods that are fermented to replenish them, by eating lots of good fiber to help feed your colonies, you can even include specific prebiotic fibers like inulin and other solunol. There's several good uh, prebiotic fibers out there. Uh, fruits like berries, especially blueberries, are really high in pectin, another good source 
of prebiotic fiber for you. Lemna, which we'll be coming out with soon. I can't wait till we bring it back. Still waiting from the growers to do it. But Lemna is loaded with uh, a prebiotic fibers too as well. So you can get this, what you need. Please share this if you feel so compelled. If there's anybody out there in the nutritional space that you know, nutritional doctors, ask them to talk about the odd chain fatty acids. Let's get this research out there. So more important now. Last but not least, I'll leave you with one other pathway that uh, researchers have found. And I'll go ahead and just put this right up on the screen because it's pretty interesting. Let's see if it fits on the screen or if I put too much text there. Okay, here we go. Yes, it all fits. <laughs> I'm up here. Okay, so here we go. The top is the study. Branch chain amino acids, valine and leucine, have different effects on hepatic lipid metabolism. Remember, this is where odd chain fatty acids are created in the liver. So lip lipid metabolism in the liver, hepatic lipid metabolism, is the synthesis, also includes the synthesis or the creation of odd chain fatty acids in the liver. Okay, so... Our data clearly shows that valine, valine is one of the three branch chain amino acids. You've got leucine, isoleucine, and valine. So valine is one of the three branch chain amino acids. And our data clearly show that valine supplementation in vivo, that's in real living beings, <laughs> uh, contributes to C15 and C17 formulation through these two described pathways. I won't go into the metabolic pathways. It's scientific, it'll bore you. But you can check out the study for yourself and look it up for yourself if you wanna do a deep dive into the science. But branch chain amino acids, which we sell for sure, <laughs> um, can help you form C15 and C17. This is corroborated by in vitro studies showing valine treatment leads to elevated odd chain fatty acid levels, with inductions, uh, I won't bore you on that, PPAR alpha and uh, HCA1. So in a dose-dependent manner. So the more branch chains you include in your diet by either supplementing or by getting high-protein foods, you're actually ending up creating. So you got multiple pathways here. You've got a good fiber diet. You've got branch chains can help it out. And even our body produces its own propionate, which can add to the mix. So you've got three different pathways that the body can create its own from food or from supplementation that can give you all the odd chain fatty acids you need. So you don't need to take a C15 supplement. It is non-essential. The research says as much because there are multiple pathways in which our body can create its own. The only way of it to be essential is if our body could not create its own. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm going to keep continuing to bring you the truth of the information about supplementation, about food sources, about a plant-based diet and the nutrition that affects your body so that you can make the best decisions for yourself and so that you can pass this information on to other people. I know this was deep science, but in a nutshell, you don't need to uh, consume uh, odd chain fatty acids and you definitely do not need to consume high fat dairy, which could cause lots of other problems, including intake of cholesterol, saturated fats. Oh, please don't get me started. That's not the right path. Let your body create its own by giving it all the fiber and all the branch chains it needs. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.